Did you know that skin cancer is the fifth most common type of cancer in the UK? And yet, many of us still underestimate just how serious it can be. Every year, over 16,000 new cases of melanoma are diagnosed. That's around 44 people every single day. In this video, I'm going to share what the warning signs are, and most importantly, how you can protect yourself and those you love. This isn't just a medical talk, it's potentially life-saving. I'm Dr. Sabana, a family practitioner specializing in skin and aesthetics. Let's start off by talking about the types of skin cancer. There are three main types of skin cancer, basal cell carcinomas, squamous cell carcinomas, and melanomas. So basal cell carcinomas, BCC, are the most common type of skin cancers. It develops in the basal cells, which are at the bottom of the epidermis, the outermost layer of the skin. BCCs are generally slow growing and rarely spread to other parts of the body. While they can be treated successfully, they can cause local damage and disfigurement, especially if left untreated. They are usually smooth and have a pearly, shiny appearance. It can have this characteristic rolled edge and sometimes have what we call telangtasia, which is when you have broken blood vessels near the lesion. They can sometimes bleed and develop a crust or scab. Patients often say they look as if they're about to heal, but they never completely heal. BCCs are usually found on the face, around the nose, and sometimes on the ears and around the scalp. Then you have squamous cell carcinomas, known as SCCs. These are often the second most common form of skin cancer and characterized by abnormal accelerated growth of squamous cells. SCCs can appear as scaly red patches or open sores, and they're usually rough and thickened. They are often raised growths with a central depression. SCCs can have a crusty appearance, they can be itchy and sometimes bleed. These lesions are most commonly around places that are sun exposed areas and these include places of the body, the face, arms, legs and scalp. When caught early, most SCCs are curable. While the majority of squamous cell carcinoma cases can be easily and successfully treated, if you allow it to grow, then these lesions can become disfiguring. They can actually become quite dangerous and even deadly. Untreated SCCs can become invasive. They can grow deeper into the layers of the skin and even spread to other parts of the body. And then there's melanomas. This is the most aggressive and dangerous form of skin cancer. And unfortunately, melanoma cases have been rising steadily, especially in younger people. Even though it's preventable in many cases, over 2,000 people die from melanoma in the UK each year. Melanoma is a type of skin cancer that develops from melanocytes, the cells that produce melanin. That's the pigment that gives our skin color. Melanoma is a serious cancer that can spread to other parts of the body if not detected and treated early. A new mole or a change in an existing mole may be a sign of a melanoma. Melanomas can appear anywhere on your body, but they're more common in areas that are often exposed to the sun. Some rarer types can affect the eyes, soles of the feet, palms, and sometimes even in the genital area. So what signs should you look out for? When it comes to melanomas, early detection is vital. So the ABCDE rule helps identify suspicious moles. A stands for asymmetry. So look at the mole. Does one half of the mole match the other side? Normal moles are usually symmetrical. If a mole has uneven appearance, then this needs to be checked out. B is for border. Take a look at the mole and look at the edges. Does it look irregular or does the edges look blurred? This could also be another sign for a melanoma. C is for color. Is there a variety of shades and colors to the mole? Normal moles are usually only one color, whereas melanomas are often a mix of two or more colors. D is for diameter. Normal moles are usually small, whereas melanomas tend to be bigger and can often be more than six millimeters wide. E is for evolving. By this, we mean it is changing in size, shape or color and be concerned if these changes are happening quickly. Normal moles usually don't change very quickly, and if there are changes, then it's usually at a very small, minimal rate. Other signs to also look out for are things like swelling of the mole, the mole feeling sore, if it starts to bleed, gets itchy or crusty. Regular self-examinations and professional skin checks can make a significant difference because early detection is vital. And this is where the ABCDE rule for melanoma is really useful. You can use this guide to monitor and review your moles. If you notice any signs that I've listed, then book an urgent appointment with your doctor and get your mole checked. And don't forget, skin cancer doesn't only appear on sun exposed areas. It can also develop on the soles of your feet, in your nail beds, or even on your scalp. Early detection is everything. When caught early, melanoma has a survival rate of over 90%, but when diagnosed late, the rate drops dramatically. Let me share a story with you about one of my patients. I saw a patient recently, she is in her 30s, healthy, active, 
no family history of skin cancers, and she noticed a lesion on her shoulder. It recently started increasing in size. She thought it was a skin tag and ignored it for a few months. She decided to visit a local beauty clinic that was advertising skin tag removals. The beautician removed the mole with no questions asked. Um, they used a cryotherapy or a freezing pen to remove it. And unfortunately, the clinic did not have the facilities to send the lesion off for further analysis. The patient thought that the lesion was removed and completely forgot about it until about six weeks later when she realized that it had grown back really quickly and was darker than it was before. She finally came in to see me and we arranged an urgent referral to the local skin cancer clinic where they biopsied the lesion. This is when a sample from the lesion is removed and sent for analysis under a microscope. And unfortunately, it was diagnosed as melanoma. Thankfully, it was still treatable, but it required surgery and it left a significant scar, both physically and mentally. She later told me that she didn't think it would be skin cancer. And naturally, most of us don't. We would never think that it would ever happen to us. And she also thought she was too young to develop a melanoma. Her story is a powerful reminder that skin cancer doesn't discriminate. And on a side note, if you do visit an aesthetic clinic or a beauty clinic, please avoid having lesions removed there unless they are fully confident they can diagnose the skin lesion and they have the facility to send off the sample to the lab for further analysis. In my clinic, even if we are 100% confident that we know what the lesion is, we always send the sample off to the lab for further analysis. This way we are checking what our diagnosis is and we make sure we don't miss anything worrying like a melanoma by a misdiagnosis. Okay, so what puts you at a higher risk of developing melanoma? So you have UV exposure. Ultraviolet light, UV light, is the main environmental factor that increases the risk of developing melanomas. UV light comes from the sun or sunbeds. In the UK, around 85 out of 100 melanomas are caused by too much UV light. Research shows that people who have used a sunbed are at an increased risk of getting melanoma. And the risk is highest for people who use a sunbed before the age of 35. Those of you that work outdoors a lot are also at risk due to the continuous UV exposure. And then there's sunburns as another risk factor. Just five sunburns in a lifetime can double your risk of developing melanoma. People who have had sunburns are more likely to get melanomas than those who haven't. The risk is higher if you had sunburns several times in your life. And this increase in risk is seen with sunburn at all ages, not just in childhood. The other risk factor is your skin type. Your skin type and your color affect your risk of developing melanoma. If you tend to burn in the sun easily, then you're at a higher risk. People who have Fitzpatrick skin type one to two, especially with those with fair or red hair, are more at risk of developing melanoma. So are people with lots of freckles. People with Fitzpatrick type four to five can also get melanoma, albeit a smaller risk. If they do, it's most often a type of melanoma that develops on the soles of the feet or palms of the hands. And this is called acral lentiginous melanoma. Another major risk factor is family history. So your risk of melanoma is higher if you have a close relative who's had melanoma. This is probably partly because we tend to share the same colouring and skin type as your close relative. Your risk is highest if your relative had a melanoma when they were younger than 30 and if you've had more than one first degree relative that's had a melanoma. So first degree being your parents or your siblings. Having lots of moles can be a risk factor for getting melanomas. The more moles you have on your body, the higher your risk of melanomas. One study found that melanoma risk was higher in people with 100 or more common moles compared to people with 15 or fewer moles. It doesn't mean that you will definitely get a melanoma if you have lots of moles, but it does mean you should be very careful in the sun and you should regularly get your moles checked. If you do have a ton of moles, then follow what I tell my patients. Take a picture of your moles or ask someone to do it for you and then repeat this again every six months. This way you can track any changes and you can keep a photographic diary that you can review yourself or you can show it to your doctor if you ever seek advice. Right, to sum it up, skin cancer is more common than many realize. Knowing your risk factors and checking your skin regularly can save your life. Don't ignore a mole that looks different or keeps changing. And sun protection isn't just for holidays, it's for everyday use. Have you or someone you know been affected by skin cancer? Do you have any questions about what to look out for or how to stay safe? then please leave a comment below. I'd love to hear your stories and help answer your questions. And if you found this video helpful, please give it a like, share it with someone who needs to hear this and subscribe for more content on skin health and wellness. Stay safe, stay informed and take care of your skin. Thanks for watching.